Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC Guy. Today I want to introduce you to a brand new product from DCC Concepts designed specifically for the NCE Power Cam to provide greater power and enhanced operational capabilities. So let's zoom in down here at the workbench and I'll give you a hands-on view of exactly what Aegis is and I'll show you how it works. So let's get started. Hit that little red uh, subscribe button and when the little bell comes up, click on it and click all. Now the NCE Power Cab is an extremely popular DCC system, both for beginners and as an introductory DCC system for folks who are switching from DC. So if you don't have one already, take a look at this NCE product. It really does offer a lot, even for a beginner or introductory type system, because it does provide a lot of advanced functions that are not found on most introductory type systems. One of the problems with this being a introductory system is that it does have some limitations. The Aegis system was designed by the engineers at DCC Concepts to provide additional power and performance upgrades to the NCE power cap. So let's go ahead and zoom in down here on the bench top and I'll give you a look at what that really means. Okay, the basic component of Aegis is the base station itself. And you can see it has this very heavy duty brushed aluminum face plate. And that is because this system is designed to be installed in the fascia of your layout. So it doesn't come with an enclosure. However, that is an option that you can purchase. They are making enclosures that will fit around the system and will allow it to sit on a bench top or a shelf or a desk, wherever you want it. And they also include a set of screws for the purpose of mounting it into your fascia. So all you'll have to do is make a cutout into your fascia, slide this into place, install the screws, and make the connections and you'll be ready to run. The base station consists of a 5 amp booster. Now that gives you a continuous 5 amps on the track, not the usual 3 amps continuous 5 amps peak that most DCC systems offer. And they're able to do that because they have this very robust uh, 24 volt 5 amp power supply that plugs in right here. And that gives you a selection of 14 volts, 15 volts, 17 volts, or 18 volts on the track. And you can make those selections yourself and I'll show you in a minute exactly how that works. As I said, you get 5 amps of power going to the track, so that greatly increases the number of locomotives and accessories that you can use simultaneously on your model railroad. So this would be a great way to upgrade when you go to a larger model railroad or when you increase your collection of locomotives. Let me go ahead and turn this on so you can see. And there's an on off button right here, the first one in line. And you'll see as soon as I turn that on, all these buttons come up. Now the first one, as I said, is the on off switch. The next one is a reset switch. So let me show you how that works. I'm going to take this coin and drop it across the, the, the rails. And you can see we've gone to a red flashing light here on this button. Now I'm going to remove this. And what that is, it's a circuit breaker. So they've included a fast acting circuit breaker that will kick in and shut power off to the track if a short circuit or an overload occurs on the track. As soon as you've cleared the short, you can push the button and track power will come back on again. Now the next two buttons are the programming and the main track power buttons. So these will allow you to switch back and forth between the programming track on your model railroad and the main track on your model railroad. And I'll show you that in just a minute. Right here though is another button that uh, normally is blue. And when the power cab is connected, like so, you can see it goes green to indicate that you've got a hot connection on the system. This has an additional function. If you need to suddenly stop all the locomotives on your layout, as soon as you push the button, it will give you a stop command and stop all the locomotives on the layout. And then you can push the button again to reestablish power.
So you can see we've got power back on the layout. Over here on this end is the pairing button, and that's to allow you to uh, pair the Aegis transmitter to the base station. So you would push this button and this button at the same time, and they would pair up just like with any other type of communications device on computers and the like. It's not a Bluetooth system, but it's similar to it in the pairing, or the way that pairing works. Since I've already done it and got these paired up, it's not necessary. Now, as I said, this is the transmitter for communicating between the power cab and the Aegis system. So I'm just going to turn that on, and you can see it started to blink. And now I'm going to plug in my power cab to it. And you can see it's gone steady blue, and this has gone steady blue. That indicates that we've got a connection between the power cab and the base station. So you can see, I can now operate the locomotive in the background using my power cab without it plugged in at all to the base station. You'll note that the transmitter has this handy little belt clip, which makes it a lot easier for walk-around operations. They have also included this silicone rubber cap that fits over the top of the NCE power cab and helps protect it from damage. And it also has this clip here where you can attach this lanyard that then hangs around your neck. So you can work hands-free when you need to, and then you can pick the power cab back up in your hand and start running trains again. Also here on the transmitter on the bottom, you'll notice that we've got, this is the plug where the power cab plugs in, and it does require using the six wire cable that came with your power cab. And once that's plugged in, you're reconnected. Also notice right here, this is the connection for a USB type C charger. So it allows you to recharge this unit. It has a lithium ion battery inside, and it's a slow charge system. So you probably will want to do this overnight, and that should give you enough battery power for six hours continuous operation, even longer if it's sitting a lot and not in use. And one thing that happens when it is not actively being used, it will start, this button here will start to flash to let you know that your throttle is in standby mode. So we'll sit that down and let that go. Okay, let's take a look at what these various sockets here on the front, because there's three of them. Now the first one here is what's called their alpha socket, and that's there to allow you to plug in various of their alpha components. And we can talk about those in future videos, but it's something like a control panel and various other devices. Uh, it is not there for connecting throttles. This one here, the uh, main cab uh, connection, is for connecting the power cab itself to the base system when you need to. In addition, over here, this one is the programming connection. So anytime that you're going to do service mode programming, you do need to plug in your power cab to this socket. So there are basically three times that you will need to plug in your power cab to the base unit. One of them is when you are actively doing programming, because in order to read back, it has to be connected to the base station. Now another time is when you're using wired throttles, like this cab 06 here. In order for those to communicate with the power cab and the command station built into it, it has to be connected to the base station as well. And another time that it needs to be plugged in is if you're using the NCE USB interface with it. Let's take a look at what's on the back here. So the power supply that comes with the system has a barrel plug connector on it, so you just plug it into here and you're ready to go. However, if you have to use a different power supply, it does indicate a plus and a minus, and a connector is supplied with the system so that you can make a direct plug-in connection here. But for the most part, you're going to be using the barrel plug on the power supply that comes with Aegis. Now, these are a number of setup jumpers that are covered in the manual. Basically, most of the time, they're going to leave those just as they are. Now, these three sockets here in a row are expansion sockets. They are for connecting things like fascia panels. And you can either use these D3 
BCC Concepts Alpha panels, or you can use the standard NCE connector panels. These can also be used to feed out two additional boosters on your model railroad. So if you've got five amps here and you suddenly double the size of your model railroad, you might want to add another five amp booster. And that connection would be made through that socket. This slide switch here is to provide output power for cabs. Then we have the alpha, two more of these alpha sockets for use with other alpha devices from DCC Concepts. Right here are the jumpers for selecting the track voltage. So I've got it set here on 14 volts. And then to change that, all you do is lift this up and move it to a different set of jumpers. So that easily, I changed it to an 18 volt track voltage. I'm gonna put it back to 14 before I forget. There we go. So it's that easy and simple to change track voltage. No CV settings or anything like that. It's just a quick jumper change. Then these are the two output terminals. Now the first one here is for track power. The second one is to provide a connection for your service mode programming track. Just as a reminder, a service mode programming track allows you to read the CV values in a decoder, whereas an if you're using programming on the main, all you can do is change CV settings. So it's important to be able to do that at least once when you first start using your locomotive so that you can actually read and see what the, the initial settings are for the CVs that you're changing before you start making changes to them. In addition, it provides a current limited output to the programming track. So if there's a short in your locomotive, the output to the programming track is limited and you're not gonna burn up that expensive decoder. Okay, let me turn this so I can show you additional ones. Okay, right here we have uh, two additional sockets. One of these is for adding a receiver, so you can have multiple receivers and transmitters on the layout. If you have multiple power cabs, you can make that connection. And then there's a second plug here for connecting what DCC Concepts calls their ESP devices. And these, those would be devices that transmit signals from devices on your layout back to the command station. Okay, so those are all of the different sockets and connectors on the unit. Let's go back to the front and I'll show you how a couple of things work. Now, as I said earlier, you can connect various wired throttles like the cab 06 to the unit. It will work with those without any problem at all. I've even used one of these ancient Ramtrax throttles, which was another system that used the same protocols as NCE and Wangro, and this one still works. It's probably 25 years old. One of the limitations, however, with wired throttles is due to the differences between how they are wired through their connectors and how the power cab itself is. So unfortunately, these are not compatible with the wireless transmitter. So the wireless transmitter only works with power cabs. But as I said earlier, you can have multiple power cabs using a wireless transmitter on the layout. One of the things I want to do now, let me turn this back on now that I've plugged it back in. And what I want to do is show you programming. Okay, we've got the uh, connection up again. So what I have done here is I have put two plastic rail joiners right at this point. So this would be the equivalent of your mainline track. And this is a programming track that might be built in, say at the end of a track, it could be on, a, on an industry spur, or it could even be built into the middle of your main line. And then I've got wires running out from these connections to the ends of this track and also to the ends of the main line track here. So we'll be able to program this locomotive. I turned the sound off. I'm gonna drive it onto the programming track, as you can see here. And then I'm gonna stop. And now, I'm going to plug this in here to where it says programming track and it's because of the lighting in this room it's very hard for you to read this but all of these labels are etched into the metal this is one of those things that dcc concepts thought out in advance they decided instead of printing labels on the faceplate where they could get 
rubbed off by fingers over time, they decided to etch the labels directly into it. So under normal lighting, you can see this, but with my lighting here with all these bright lights, it's very difficult for, to read it. Okay, so basically then I've connected to the programming track. Now let's switch between the two. So I'm gonna switch power over to programming. So you can see that we've switched over. So now I can take my throttle and I can hit programming. And I'm gonna to jump to step four, use the programming track. And let's go with standard. And we'll wait while it reads the initial values. Now you can see it says manufacturer 151. This is a low sound decoder. It's a decoder version 255. Uh, it's asking me if I want to set up the address. Uh, I think I'm going to skip that. Uh, and, and we're going to skip that. And we'll skip that. And skip so you can go through all of these things. Let's read what CV2 is. So CV2 is set at 01. So I'm going to hit enter, keep it the same. Let's see what 3 is. 3 is set at 50. Okay, so I'm going to keep that. And then I'm going to escape to get out. And it's powered back up again. So now all I have to do is switch back over to main track mode. You can see it switched. I can then plug my power cab back into the transmitter. And switch directions and drive off of the programming track. So another nice feature of the Alpha panel is it's designed to match the Aegis system, so they look great together installed on your fascia. Plus, you get an additional socket here for connecting your wired throttles when you have friends over who want to also operate locomotives. Now the Aegis systems are currently being assembled and are expected to ship right after the first of the year. So if you're interested in one of these, you might want to check them out at the dccconcepts.com website to get a lot more information about them. And if you're located in the UK, you can purchase your unit directly from DCC Concepts or from Rails of Sheffield and some of their other dealers within the UK. However, if you're in the United States, the Aegis systems will be available from ironplanethobbies.com and I suggest you check right away. I think he has those on sale now. And in Canada, they will be available from Kingston Locomotive Works. There will also be about three or four suppliers in Australia who will also have an initial allotment of these. So don't miss out, check it out right now because they are taking pre-orders for these for delivery right after the first of the year. Well, that's it for today's video. If you own a power cab, you'll see the utility of this brand new Aegis system. It really does provide greater power and enhanced operations for a lot of the basic functions of the power cab. So if you're looking for a way to upgrade your power cab and get more power and a lot more functionality from it, take a look at the brand new Aegis system and I'll put a link on the end screen here to a video on their website that also shows more about it. Plus, you can go directly to dccconcepts.com and click on the Aegis label there, and that'll take you to more information. So have a great weekend, have a great week, and I'll see you here next week with another video from the DCC Guide. Bye now.